Thanks for joining me for another video. I'm Dr. Mitchell Schwind. I'm a board certified emergency physician and I've been practicing for about 20 years. What I want to share with you in today's video is something that's very common, something that's near and dear to all our hearts. I'm going to give you some background information to sort of lay the framework for what I'm going to talk about. And I hope you stick around at the end because I'm going to be sharing something that really has the ability to change your ability to get health care and how much you pay for it. So let's dive in. What I'm talking about today is a sore throat. Big deal, you say. Everybody has a sore throat from time to time. It's not that big of an issue. Well, it is a big issue. The statistics show that about 10 to 12 million of us are affected every year with a sore throat, enough so that many of us seek medical opinion. That costs, and this is staggering, $1.2 billion or more a year. I had a hard time finding current data for what we actually spend in 2014 and 15 on sore throats, but data from a few years ago shows that we're well north of a billion, billion dollars a year in the U.S. just to deal with a simple problem. The real question is, is this strep throat or not, and does it need an antibiotics? And I want to talk about just a few simple predictive tools that we use as physicians to help decide whether or not a patient may or may not have strep throat and whether they not need an antibiotic or not. And this criteria is called the CENTOR criteria. You can look that up, C-E-N-T-O-R. I've got a whole, po whole post of it on my blog at MitchellMD.com. But anyways, the criteria are very simple. If there's a fever, if the tonsils are swollen, or if there's white goo on the tonsils, if the glands are swollen under the neck, that's called adenopathy, those all point to the potential of strep throat. If there's a runny nose and cough, that's much less likely to be caused by strep throat. And then age is a predictor as well. These criteria don't really play out very well for kids under two, but between the ages of three and 15, the risk of strep is much higher just because of the close proximity of school and daycare, sports and things like that. And uh, the corollary is that as people get beyond 45 years of age, the likelihood of strep falls off to some degree. It's not zero, but it does fall off. And so those are the, the criteria that we use to predict strep, strep throat. There are a few other things that you can look for like little red dots in the roof of the mouth that are raised. That's called the donut sign, and I've got some links to that in the blog post. But if, if all those criteria are met, the chance of strep is very high. If just one or none of those criteria are present, the chance of being strep throat is very low, like less than like 2% or so. So the other issue is, do you need to be tested? Does a person need to be tested? Testing is expensive, and I talked about this in, in an older blog post, which remains one of the most popular to date, and also in my book, A Patient's Guide to Urgent Care in the Emergency Room, and that is testing. The cost of a rapid test for strep and then the follow-up culture is usually in the order of $100 to $200, which adds a lot to the visit. Add on top of that the clinic fee, the lab fee, the doctor's fee, and you're talking an average of 150 at minimum to usually 300 to 400 dollars just to find out if you have strep throat which can be treated oftentimes with a four dollar antibiotic so it sounds a little incredible i know but that's really the economics of how healthcare is these days so i break all this down on the blog at mitchellmd.com but as i promised if you stick around till the end here is the take home point this is sort of revolutionized medicine it's been around for a number of years but it's really ramping up in its availability and that's telemedicine the ability for you to interact with a physician online on your iPhone on an app on your laptop or home computer or even just over the phone and you can go through these criteria discuss the symptoms and the duration whether it's exposure to strep and it becomes much easier for a physician to decide over the, the video, the Skype calls, if you will, whether or not strep is present. You can look in the mouth, and a test is not always necessary. I'm not saying this applies to everybody's unique situation, but this is the reality of medicine in the current era. Telemedicine is radically changing the future of medicine and will continue to do so. So thanks so much for watching the video. If you found value here, please like and share this. And uh, another something special for sticking around, Every Tuesday, I offer a Tuesday tactic. It's live on Periscope, and the replays are live on Twitter and YouTube and the blog. But you can go to mitchellmd.com forward slash Periscope. And if you have a question or something you want answered or just dying to know the answer to, just share it there, and I'll include that in an upcoming Periscope episode. So take care. Be well. We'll talk to you soon.